In this video, we're going to talk about PKA. Well, the question we want to answer here is what is PKA? How is it useful? And how can we apply PKA to understand more about acidity and basicity? Well, we'll see PKA is going to be a universal way of measuring the relative strengths and acids and bases. It's just one number which summarizes the strengths and weaknesses of acids and bases. And so I'm going to draw out one sample reaction here as an example. We'll see how we can apply this. And actually, we won't even really get to PKA until a little bit later, but I just want to just go through and, and make sure that we introduce the basics. So if we take a molecule like HCl, HCl can, we'll say, spontaneously dissociate to H plus and Cl minus. In reality, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but we can draw an expression for this. And we remember that not only can we dissociate HCl to give H plus and Cl minus, but we can also, there can also be an association as well between H plus and Cl minus. So this reaction can proceed from the right to the right as well as to the left. So this reaction is reversible to some extent. And therefore it is an equilibrium. Okay. And according to what we know about equilibrium constants, remember that we can measure the equilibrium or write an expression for the equilibrium of a reaction if we take the products, the concentrations of the products, H plus and let's say Cl minus and the concentration of H plus, the concentration of Cl minus and the concentration of HCl. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this very specifically Ka. This is the, the acid dissociation constant. Okay, Ka. And we can actually measure this. And this is, this is not something you'd be able to figure out just by looking at it. You'd actually need to get in the lab, get your hands dirty, and measure this acid dissociation constant. And what it turns out, this reaction being very favorable, this term is large. It's a very favorable reaction. The concentration of H plus is large. And this term is very small. So this being large, this being small, this turns out to be a pretty large number. This is about 10 to the 8 or so, okay, in favor of dissociation. All right, so let's look at a slightly different reaction. Let's look at water dissociating to H plus and OH minus. And again, this reaction is also reversible. This can also be in equilibrium. Now, this, it turns out this reaction, we can also write a acid dissociation constant for this as well. So we say H plus and OH minus, and then we have concentration of water. Okay, and this would also be our Ka. Now, in this equation, it turns out that actually this is not such a favorable dissociation. In fact, this, again, this is something that you couldn't figure out from just looking at it. You need to actually measure. So this term is actually, our H plus term is going to be small. Actually, so will the OH. They'll be equal to each other. And this is going to be large. So that means that this is large this is small, and this number, Ka, is maybe about 10 to the power of minus uh, 15 or so, around that number, 10 to the minus 15. Okay, so much, much, much smaller number. And then finally, let's take the last example where we could, let's say, dissociate. Now, this reaction would really not happen in real life. It's just too unfavorable. We can at least draw an expression for it. We can draw an equilibrium constant for it. K equals H plus CH3 minus, and these would both be in brackets, over the concentration of CH4. Okay, and again, we could draw, make this our Ka. And now this CH3, this number, the concentration of CH3 minus is just minuscule. Minuscule, minuscule. It's just ridiculously small. 
and so we can have that as a very small arrow and this would be really further to the much 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 further to the left and therefore this would be just huge this number the concentration of HCl so this is huge concentration of CH4 is huge concentration of H plus is puny turns out this number is about 10 to the minus 50 or so depending on how you measure it so it's an extremely small number now we don't like so this is a strong acid just to review this is a weak acid and you see our strong acid has a huge acid dissociation constant our weak acid has a very very small acid dissociation constant now we actually really don't like dealing with exponents and we can avoid it so it would be handy if we could take the log of the Ka for example if we took the log of 10 to the 8th so log of 10 to the 8th that would give us a number of 8 and log of 10 to the minus 15 would give us a number of well minus 15 or so and log of 10 to the minus 50 gives a number of about minus 50 so 8 minus 15 and minus 50 for the logs of each of these uh, numbers log of 10 to the minus 50 equals minus 50 now as we turn out as a as a point of of convenience most most acids that we will we will see in organic chemistry most acids are weak most of them are actually going to have negative numbers when we look at log um, the log ka and it's a pain to have to deal with negative numbers all the time so it's actually these are the the, the strong acids are the ones with the pKa with the sorry the with the log Ka above one. These are the minority. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a term. Um, we're going to define a term pKa. It's much more convenient to deal with the the negative negative log of the Ka because that way we can actually deal with. Um, much most of the time we're going to be dealing with positive numbers instead of negative numbers. So what that's going to do is that's going to give us it's going to make this minus minus eight, and it's going to make this plus fifteen. It's going to make this plus fifty, and so that is the the pKa is the the negative log of the Ka. You can see that for very strong acids like HCl we have a negative Ka. A negative pKa, sorry, negative pKa. So, in other words, small because it's you know it's a small, it's a it's a negative number. And for a very weak acid such as CH4, we have very large, you know, positive pKa. So actually, the higher the pKa number, this is a very this is a very weak acid very weak acid has a very high pKa number and a very low pKa number is a very strong acid so you see that also the one last thing to mention is the fact that look at the scale of these numbers minus 8 and 50 that is 58 orders 58 orders of magnitude which is just enormous that is like the distance between the smallest observable unit of length, the Planck, the Planck length, and the 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 diameter of the known universe. Um, that gives you an idea of the scale of chemistry and the scale of the reactivity patterns of these molecules. So it is just huge. It's one of those things really difficult to wrap your mind around how enormous the differences are, but they're huge. So again, this is just introductory to pKa. pKa is this one number which can help us unite all of these different factors we were talking about the seven different factors of um of that affect acidity and we can put them all in one table and actually i put them in the table here you can see actually this is we also saw this for for leading groups so at the very top we have hi and then we have the hydrohalous acids minus 10 minus 9 
uh, HCl as well, minus six to minus eight. Uh, sulfuric acids are strong acids at the top. And then as we get to weaker, weaker and weaker acids, HF is about three. Carboxylic acids like acetic acids, four. Um, protonated amines are nine to 11. Water, 16. Alcohols around 16 to 18. Amines, very weak acids, uh, pK of 35. Hydrogen's weak, and also alkanes, pK of about 50. So these are the weakest of the weak acids. So in this one number, just, you know, we get this through measurement, we can summarize all that information that we've talked about earlier in the seven different factors that affect acidity. Just by looking at this one number, the pKa, you can tell us in a glance how acidic something is. And in the next video, we'll actually go through an example of how to use a pKa table to figure out if a reaction, uh, an acid-base reaction, is going to work or not.